Uh, so today, our topic is how GPS data can boost business performance. Uh, Workies and Links Up recently uh, launched a partnership, an integration together uh, to help on the GPS tracking in Workies. And so we thought it'd be a good opportunity to, to just uh, bring on uh, Donna and John from the Links Up team today and talk about GPS data and just in general and how it can help um, field service businesses. So without further ado, let's kind of get into it. So today I'm going to go through a brief agenda right now. We're going to introduce our guest speakers and then we're going to get into the weeds of how GPS can improve your bottom line. Then we'll move into a Q&A. So uh, bring some questions for us. We're more than happy to answer your questions. And if you have questions throughout, we'll try to address those too. And then lastly, we'll go uh, over some final words. So let's start with John. Um, can you kind of introduce yourself? What's your story? And then afterwards, let's move to Donna. Yeah, hi, everybody. Thanks for, uh, for joining. Uh, I'm responsible for partnerships at Links Up. I've been with the company getting close to five years now. I have been in the space for longer than that. Uh, basically responsible for channel sales and marketing. Um, that's me. All right, and hello everybody. Um, I'm Donna Fritz, I'm glad to be here. Um, I've actually been with Links Up about a year now. Um, I've got about uh, 30 years of experience in marketing and in sales and in product, uh, primarily in business to business technology. And so I'm really looking forward to sharing the data on, um, on how GPS can actually help everybody um, grow their business. And then I'm Wes Friednash here at Workies. I'm your moderator today. Um, and I've been with Workies for a few years. Uh, I'm running our partnership. So I've been working very closely with John over at Links Up, And we're excited to get this launched. I believe that we finally launched this partnership about week and a half, two weeks ago. And yeah, we're excited that we have this capability in Workies now. So let's get into it. Um, today, we're gonna again, go over the benefits of GPS tracking and how it can really improve your bottom line here uh, for your business. So I, let's just get into it. The first benefit we see is reduced costs John, can you talk a little bit about um, why GPS is known for reducing costs and how it does that? Yeah, sure. So I think first off, uh, and this is a pretty easy one to, to, to sort of get, uh, we help you reduce idling by setting idling thresholds, uh, sending alerts based on when those thresholds are exceeded. Uh, you can set alerts based on unauthorized use of vehicles and equipment, for example. Um, so if your uh, folks are using your equipment, your vehicles outside permitted hours, uh, you know, you'll, you'll know about that. Um, you can monitor the routes that are driven to, you know, work sites, for example, to see whether they're the most optimal routes, whether there are a lot, of, you can monitor stops so that if there are a lot of stops happening that shouldn't be, you know, you, you'll be aware of that. So you can certainly save money in terms of fuel costs, um, you know, along the lines of what I, I just mentioned there. Um, in addition, uh, you can leverage AI cameras uh, and driver scorecards to reduce liability and insurance premiums. Um, the AI camera will track things like tailgating, uh, seatbelt use, cell phone use, or lack, the, you know, uh, lack thereof in terms of seatbelt use, uh, and, and tampering uh, uh, with the camera. Uh, the driver scorecard can just provide a, you know, a, basically a grade, A, B, C, D, uh, based on driving, speeding, uh, hard braking, uh, rapid acceleration. Uh, you can use that to provide incentives for good driving um, so that, you know, that will help bring down a line in combination, for example, with a camera, uh, uh, you know, reduce your liability certainly, and, you know, insurance premiums as well. Um, and then you can do things like tracking time on site using a geofence. Uh, you can use that to validate time cards. So if your employees are clocking in and out on an app, you can validate that against when the geofence uh, said that they entered the site 
and when they left the site and how much time they spent there. You can also use that for things like job costing and job estimating. Is this job taking as long as I thought it was going to take or is it taking you know, too long, right? Longer than I thought it was going to take. Uh, another use case, pretty basic one is uh, maintenance. You can certainly reduce wear and tear by getting an alert when scheduled maintenance is approaching. Uh, you can set up the thresholds for how far in advance you want it to receive that alert. Uh, and then you can get alerts to unscheduled maintenance, like your check engine light just came on and we can let you know, uh, hey, what is the check engine alert? Uh, what's the code and what does it actually you know, mean? And then, you know, of course, um, uh, you can also uh, use just the basic location on the map to recover stolen vehicles and equipment. If that ever should uh, unfortunately happen to you, at least you can, you know, have a shot at, uh, at, at recovering your, your vehicles and equipment. And, you know, in addition to this, this isn't really saving money, but there's certainly a greater peace of mind associated with knowing, you know, where your valuable, uh, you know, equipment and vehicles are. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a sense. Um, I, I have a follow-up question real quickly. Uh, so when we're talking about uh, companies who incentivize good driving, you know, the your van, your truck, uh, it, it's, it, it's a huge part of your branding. It has your logo, typically has your logo on it, has your business name, uh, stuff like that. So, I mean, when we're talking about uh, incentivizing behavior on the road, mm -hmm. what are some of the things you see like companies doing? Um, how are they incentivizing their drivers and yeah. their technicians? Sure. So I, you know, I mentioned that driver scorecard, for example, right? A, B, C, D. Uh, you know, what we see is people will, you know, you can gamify that. Uh, essentially, you can create a leaderboard with everybody on it. Everyone can see, drivers can see, managers can see where they are on the leaderboard. And, you know, there can be a reward, say, at the end of the month for the safest driver or, you know, that sort of thing. So that is how, you know, people are using it to provide an incentive, uh, you know, to drive more safely. Awesome. Um, Donna, did you have uh, anything you wanted to add on, on this topic? Uh, no, I mean, I think, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, the safety aspect and kind of, you know, tying in with insurance. That's actually something I'll probably cover in a couple of slides. So I'll probably just cover it then. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. Uh, okay. So moving on, uh, the second, I would say main benefit here is uh, increasing productivity. So GPS tracking is pretty well known for increasing productivity. John uh, can talk a little bit about some of the ways that implementing in the, this into your business can do that. Yeah, so uh, you know, tracking time on site is a big one, right? So again, using geofences, you can understand when your crew or your tech arrives at the site, how much time they spend there, when they leave, right? So again, it's validating time cards. Um, hey, you know, is there a discrepancy between when they checked in and out on the app versus when the vehicle says they got there and left, right? Um, is, and if this discrepancy is more than X number of minutes, you know, that might be something to follow up on. Um, you can improve your job costing, uh, you know, sort of bid versus actual. So you might have figured, hey, this job should take an hour, but boy, it certainly seems like it's taking an hour and a half or two hours, or, you know, maybe it's taking only, you know, 35 minutes. Uh, whichever way, you know, you can then decide, hey, look, you know, maybe I need to update, you know, the amount of time that I allot to this kind of a job in the future so I can, you know, cost it better and frankly bid it better going forward. Uh, and then, you know, deploying em em employees more efficiently, you know, essentially you can reduce idle worker time, for example, by, you know, if it turns out that a particular kind of job is taking you know less time than you thought. Well, maybe you can squeeze one more job per you know tech per week, uh, you know, and and increase productivity that way. Or if you're finding that a particular job is taking way too long, uh, you could act in real time by if you want you know sending additional employees to that site, uh, you know, so that you can you know essentially take care of whatever the issue is. 
So, you know, those are ways that you can use tracking time on site to you know, improve your productivity. You can also, as we mentioned earlier, you know, monitor routes driven. So you can take the, you know, you can review, uh, you know, the routes for whether they were the optimal routes or whether there were a number of stops that are being taking place that, you know, perhaps shouldn't be. Um, and then, you know, finally, you can use just location on a map to dispatch the driver that, it, you know, based on proximity to the customer. So if you have a, a work order that comes in in the middle of the day, your teams are out, uh, you know, you can say, okay, I want to squeeze this in. I'm going to send, let's see who's closest. You know, um, you know, I'll use that as a, a as a factor in terms of deciding who it is that I want to send to that particular job. So those are different ways that you can increase productivity. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of value uh, in certainly understanding where your your vans are and your drivers are um, and how close they are to something, because I, I think I can see this being pretty relevant in a like a lot of emergency services. So like plumbing, locksmith, stuff like that. And then B, I could see this relevant even not in emergency surge, uh, emergency services, like a junk removal. If you are trying to fill your whole truck, like uh, you're go going to the dump anyway to dump this stuff off. Let's talk, let's see what customers we can reach out to proactively through workies uh, to see like, Hey, can we fill the rest of this truck uh, at a discounted price? Um, th there are a lot of junk pros doing stuff like that. And I think uh, GPS can certainly help. Great use cases. Yep. All right. So we're going to move on to the next topic here, which is improving safety. So uh, first of all, I think just to introduce this topic here, the first two slides when we're talking about cost reduction and increasing productivity, I think are pretty self-evident benefits. Um, but when we're talking about safety, I, I think that's something about that. That's something that's come up a lot fairly recently. Uh, I, I'm going to turn it over to Donna here. Can you share kind of where safety fits in GPS tracking and uh, how businesses can do this safely? Sure, absolutely. I think, you know, if you've got kind of one big takeaway kind of of this particular slide or kind of what GPS tracking can do is it because of the way that GPS tracking is architected, it actually helps you to be more proactive about safety. You know, you, you talked, Wes, about the fact that people are uh, it's more in people's minds. Right. So um, fortunately, you know, with the way that GPS tracking is architected, it gives you kind of the tools to get out in front of safety or to address it a little bit more quickly. So, you know, why is that important? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some statistics while we're on this slide as well. Some of these statistics don't make it into the mainstream media as much as they probably should. And so they're, they can kind of be a little bit more attention getting. But commercial drivers average about four and a half and uh, 4.5 act incidents per year. And when you when when you look at that, that's you know, that 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 can be a lot. And when you think about liability, about a third of those are deemed as the driver's fault. So all of a sudden, you know, John talked about liability on his first slide. That's where it starts. Um, that's really where it starts to add up. But before um, I kind of unpack that a little bit, I wanted to take a step back and really take a look at the cost. Kind of we when we when we think about safety at links, if we kind of think about uh, we kind of think about the costs in four areas. We think about the human cost, which is, you know, nobody wants their employees or others injured as a result of company activities, right? They, they don't want that. So we know that there's a human cost associated with this. We know that there's a financial cost. Uh, here's another statistic. An average insurance claim is around $128,000. And yes, I said $1,000. It's, it's, there's a lot of money there. Um, and that is not necessarily, and I'll talk in a couple seconds as to why that's actually probably today a little bit low because that statistic is a couple years old. Um, the other thing is that um, when we look at insurance claims, insurance claims, we look at insurance premiums, fleet insurance accounts for about 12% of a company's overall operating costs today as well. So again, this is becoming a bigger and bigger issue. So I think that's probably why people are talking about it. The reason it's probably going to continue to go up is that over the past couple of years, personal injury law firms have created a kind of a sub cottage industry to go after company vehicle accidents. So um, I can tell you, I live here in Texas and I cannot watch the local news without seeing 
advertisements and commercials for at least three different personal injury lawyers every single day touting anywhere from hundreds of thousands to $50 million settlements against, uh, uh, based on company vehicle accidents that they got basically claims for their, for their, uh, for their clients. So costs are continuing to go up, liabilities continuing to go up. So obviously that's one of the other reasons why it continues to be front and center. Um, the last thing when we talk about financial costs is we're also looking about, you know, hidden costs. So, and that would be, you know, maintenance, wear and tear uh, on vehicles. Um, it can be speeding, harsh braking, hard accelerating, like John talked a, a few minutes ago. Um, all of those activities or behaviors um, can add up to increased maintenance costs, increased brake fixes. They also tend to shorten the life of your vehicles. So if you can imagine, if you look at your finances and you've got to replace a truck six months early, what does that do to you? And how much does this unsafe driving behavior, this hard driving behavior, or even reckless at times, how much does that really impact your, your financial planning for the next you know, six, 12, 18 months? Sometimes that can create a, a, create a little bit of strain, right? So those are the things we look at from a financial standpoint. We also look at productivity. Work-related accidents create a 25% loss in workplace pro productivity. That's another statistic that isn't out there very frequently, but I think people, I think you kind of feel it when you have somebody, when you have a driver get into an accident, I think you kind of feel it, but it's not anything that people kind of normally talk about. And so I wanted to bring that up. It's not just obviously when the employee can't show up for work, it also puts a strain on job scheduling. It also creates uh, potentially additional costs in labor because when people have to cover for somebody who can't come into work because they got injured, then sometimes they have to work overtime. So all of a sudden now you have overtime costs, you have claims costs, you have a number of different things. Um, but that, but really, it really does impact, um, the, you know, impact kind of field service workplaces just simply because there, there's often not enough people to cover basically the person who's out. There's also lost vehicle productivity. So if you get into a fender bender or maybe it's even a worse accident, then there's the downtime of the vehicle because I'm, I'm, a lot of businesses don't have backup trucks. And so vehicles out of commission, uh, possibly it has to be replaced. So that also puts an additional strain on your scheduling. It puts additional strain on your finances. And it also takes management's time or ownership's time away because then now you have to negotiate with insurance companies to get everything resolved. So that's kind of the way that we look at, the way that we look at safety and kind of the, the dimensions when, when we make safety recommendations uh, for our customers. I'll kind of dive a little bit into, well, how does GPS help with safety? Um, as I talked about a little bit earlier, GPS systems monitor and collect safety related data in real time. And so if you think about how do you, how do you really use GPS as a category to really improve business safety, that's really what it does. It's collecting all this data for you. The better systems are built to, uh, to, co to collect it and report it on it and it kind of point you in the right direction of here's what's going on. And John talked about safety cards and things at the, at the top of the, of the presentation. That's how, that's how these systems are designed to work. So they actually put, the, put this data in front of you and help you to, to guide, is this a short-term issue that I need to basically address in real time? Or is, are they kind of more, uh, more long-term and maybe more company-wide issues? So let's say that maybe, you, maybe it's an issue across all of your drivers and they're all speeding, or maybe they're all hard braking, or maybe they're all doing something like that, or maybe it's one or two drivers that are just generally driving recklessly. So you kind of, just, you, you kind of know where do you focus your efforts so you can get the biggest impact in the shortest amount of time to increase your safety. Um, John also talked about dash cams, right? Um, cameras have come a long way in the past couple of years. He talked about AI dash cams especially have come a long way. You know, these little cameras are now really smart, so they can detect um, not only what's going on kind of on the road, but also what's going on in the cab. So there can be not wearing a seat belt. There can be talking and texting while driving. There can be eating. There can be looking away from, from the windshield, kind of being distracted. Um, anything so they can de they can detect this distracted driving behavior. Why that's important is that a driver that is distracted is three hundred percent more likely to have an accident. And so what they're doing with these AI cameras now is they're actually they've actually added in 
in cab audio alerts. So if the driver is doing something, it not only sends a notice back to to management or whoever uh, to the company, but it also alerts the driver in the cab. Hey, put your phone down. Hey, put your seatbelt on. So it corrects things in the moment. It also records these cameras also record all of this activity. So you can use that for positive coaching. John talked a little bit about, you know, the rewarding drivers and the safety cards, safety, uh, the driver safety cards and, and the contests and stuff. Our customers tell us that they do this. Uh, where they will use this footage to positively coach drivers into better better behavior. And they'll have contests as to who's the best driver of the month, who's the best driver of the week, um, who got a better safety score in this particular area. So they're trying to take more of that positive approach to it, kind of more of the carrot than the stick. And that actually uh, that actually helps to improve safety even more quickly because the drivers are actually getting more on board with um, with actually you know driving more safely. Uh, Lastly, I'll talk about, you know, where does it fit? Uh, the really cool thing about it is that when you think about all the data that GPS tracking collects and kind of how it's designed, it just plugs naturally into business safety initiatives. Because when you think about safety, you're thinking about driver and vehicle safety. It, the data plugs right into those initiatives. It plugs into risk reduction because what you do can reduce the number of accidents. It plugs into lowering liability fewer at-fault accidents. It plugs into cost reduction, lower claims, lower premium, lower maintenance and brake fix and replacement costs as well. So, so it, it, it plugs in really, really nicely to these, to these, uh, to these initiatives. And so it's, it really does become kind of this necessary, kind of this vital tool um, that, that companies can have if, if they want to, they want to be safer on the road and also just want to reduce their overall costs. So, um, I would say that, you know, in addition to kind of addressing things in, in real time and being able to address things, you know, kind of in the longer term, it, probably one of the, the other biggest benefits is the added savings that come from lower insurance claims and the premiums. And I think, you know, probably everybody on this webinar would, would definitely welcome the opportunity to have lower costs. Um, and that is great stuff. When you're talking about the costs, I, I think that this is stuff you don't even think about that can be solved with safety. So I, I think it's just like taking a proactive approach at, at the end of the day to mm -hmm. make sure that you're protected, um, make sure you're working efficiently uh, to avoid bad things from happening. So, I, I mean, obviously financial benefit, safety benefit, I, I think all around. Uh, the next topic we're going to cover is gaining customer trust. So I think, um, I, I mean, at least when I hear of GPS tracking, I think there's first the conversation of the employee slash driver in the business owner, like that, that's a piece of trust. But I think the bigger, uh, the bigger benefit here is, um, probably the trust built between business and customer, uh, due to this. So, I'm going to pass it back to you, Donna, if you can talk a little bit about this and um, let, let, let's hear about it. And then after this, uh, we will have some Q&A time. Sure, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely agree with you, Wes. I think that, again, you kind of when you think about GPS tracking, it really is kind of that I'm going to keep, you know, where's my stuff? Where are my guys? You know, where's my crew? That kind of a thing. But it's, you know, uh, taking a step back and saying, well, how can I... Le leverage that information and how can I build better relationships with my customers by utilizing the information that I already have in my GPS tracking system, right? So how can I do that? And how can I keep my customers more informed and how can I build better relationships? So, but before we get started on that, because I've got just got some brief comments, um, is I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between customer satisfaction and customer trust. So when you have a satisfied customer, that typically means that they're content and they're happy, right? And so, but when you have a customer that trusts you, that means that relationship has gone a little bit deeper. That means that they view you as reliable. They view you as honest. They view you as looking out for their best interests. And so when you think about keeping your competitors at bay um, and it kind of in, in even the short term, short term or the long term, it's easier for competitors to dislodge a satisfied customer than a customer that trusts you. And so part of this is how do you build that trust with your customers? 
How do you really, really become more partners with them than just somebody who shows up once a week or to do break fix, you know, every now and then? How, how do you want them to think about, I trust this business? And so when a competitor comes in and says, well, I can do that same thing for a slightly lower price or whatever, you want. yeah, that's great, but I trust this guy or I trust this business. And so that's really the place you want to be. Cool thing is, is that GPS tracking actually helps you to get there because, and it's data that you already have. If you have a system, it's data that you already have. So um, this kind of involves, again, taking a little bit more of a strategic process, approach as to how you're using the data and how you're using the system. Um, Cause it's, again, it's used for customer relationship building. Um, in addition to that, your internal operations. When you do this, it gives you an edge over your competition because you are very quietly building these stronger relationships with your customers. You're building deeper, more unbreakable relationships with your customers. And how you're doing that is you're providing increased visibility into the work that you're doing and you're providing more proactive communication. So you're giving them better insight and you're, you're engaging with them more and keeping them more up to date. So talk a little bit about visibility. So GPS tracking obviously pretty much gives you real time um, visibility into where things are and how long they've been there. Um, you can use that same location and time on site and timing data with your customers to keep them informed as well, such as when you're on the site, how long you've been there, what work was performed. That gives them the extra added insight into the work that you're doing. And it also sends a message of accountability. Here's, what, here's where we are, here's when we arrived, here's what we did. And it, again, it helps kind of that, that accountability between your company and your customer. Our customers tell us that when they do this, because we chat, our product team chats with our customers a lot, when they do this, this approach helps them not only with their customer management, it helps them with the relationship building because it not only, again, keeps them more informed, it actually helps them to reinforce their level of expertise with their customer and it helps them to reinforce the value of the services. So they're constantly reminding their customers, we're experts and these, these are, you know, we're getting a great value for your money. So it's one of those touch points in that communication with your customers that allows you to do some brand building. It allows you to do some reinforcement and relationship building just by doing these small things of, again, how, when were you on site? How long were you there? What did you do? Basic things like that. And it doesn't take that much to implement, to, to template this, these things. And the cool thing is, and I'm going to talk about in just a second, is the better GPS tracking systems actually have a lot of this stuff already built in. So you don't have to go over into Gmail or go over other places, go into your company email. A lot of these systems already, the better systems already have this stuff built in. So you can literally work within the system. You don't have to leave the system to go communicate with your customers, which is really cool. Um, their customers also, their customers tell us that their customers are really appreciative of when they are, of, of when, they provide this information to them, their customers, again, it helps to build their relationships. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, proactive communication real quickly. So again, I talked about the fact that, you know, the, the better systems already have these tools built in, but something that you can do with proactive communication is say, hey, we're on the way and you can send a tracking link. That's a huge way to show consideration for your customers and that you value their business because they can plan better if they know you're on the way or when you're coming and when you're going to arrive. So I will tell you anecdotally that our customers really love this feature um, and they tell us that their customers do too. Um, just again, simply because it's, it's another way of just staying on the same page with them. Um, then when the work is done, you can send visit recaps with notes, with photos of the work, uh, with follow-up instructions, and then with a question, asking a simple question, verification, did everything meet your expectations, close it, closing out that, that particular engagement to make sure that customers are satisfied, that there's nothing lingering you know, in the work that you do that could turn into a problem later on. Um, that's real helpful because then you can have a more of a data-driven conversation with them to address any concerns and you're doing it right away. So, so it doesn't linger, it doesn't fester. You've got everything wrapped up. So the next time you show up, um, 
you know, everything's everything's right on track. You don't have to worry about any kind of dissatisfaction or any any kind of relationship rupture that you might have with that customer. Um, again, you know, anecdotally, our customers also love this particular feature. They say that their customers respond really, really well to it. They get back with them right away on on these on on the emails and on the on the on the text. Um, you know, letting know, hey, it looks a okay, or hey, I had a question about what you did here. It allows it, them to address it really, really quickly. Um, so, you know, the, probably the, the other thing that this does is it also provides kind of that proof of service, right? So, especially if you are there doing a break fix or something, or you're doing something regular service, and the customer isn't on site, provides provides proof of service, especially in instances where it's not obvious that the service was provided. So there's one other thing that I wanted to chat about, chat about real quickly on this was, you know, how do you leverage this? There is, you know, a way to, we talked about, you know, protecting your customer base, you know, keeping them at bay and building those strong relationships with your customers. How can you take that one step further? How can you leverage that to help grow your business and just protect your brand and grow your business? That's really by um, asking for referrals. So when you find customers that are really, really happy uh, and you do these things to help them to be happier, um, you can get them to give you very positive online reviews that a lot of times nowadays it's called social proofing, right? So you see, you know, there's all kinds of review sites and you can see, you know, somebody leaves a, a very, very nice review um, or kind of a, you know, a review with a uh, for a company online and a lot of customers check those out when they're ready to do, uh, when they're ready to kind of either change providers or get new services. So um, when you are building these strong trusting relationships, customers are far more likely to give you positive online relation uh, online reviews, which again helps your business. So think about this, think about a review where your customer says that you let them know you're on the way, you arrived on time, you did great work, and you followed up to make sure everything uh, met or exceeded their expectations. That type of review is pure gold. That's the type of review that not only protects your brand, but it also catches the eye of prospective customers to want to do business with you. And so again, using GPS tracking, just what the, the data that it already has to turn outward to your customers, to communicate more proactively, to provide more visibility, to engage with them a little bit more, um, that helps you to get to that place. That gives you that that helps you to grow your business. It helps you to build your brand. It helps you and, and also just to protect your existing customer base. So, so when you think about kind of using GPS tracking tools and data this way, again, it allows you to create trust, but ultimately it allows you to help your company to be, become even more indispensable to your customers. Um, that is great stuff. I think that's a good segue into our Q and A here. Um, you're, I, I wanted to talk real briefly as we get into this Q and A um, uh, about how we integrate together, uh, how Workies and Links Up are working together. So um, I, I think the reviews piece is an interesting thing because I, I think like one of the things that Workies tries to do is helping business owners um, and businesses in the service space become more efficient. So uh, when, when we're talking about positive reviews, I could not agree with you more. Um, even if someone had a slightly negative experience, I, I think it still helps um, the overly communication on, on like the, hey, I'm going to be two minutes late according to the GPS. Uh, there, there's a lot of stuff that can help like bad experiences turn into positive ones here. And I, I think this is a nice segue here to how we integrate together because I, I think when we're certainly talking about reviews and all of that stuff, um, that's nice benefits of like a work ease system. But when we're talking about integration together, um, so right now, if you are not using links up, if you are using work ease, you can go into the marketplace, uh, on our product and sign up for links up. Uh, and when you do sign up, you will get these devices. And once you're set up there on your vans, trucks, whatever you are using, you're going to be able to monitor uh, fuel level location, vehicle status. And if it's like idling versus driving speed, stuff like that. 
Um, and it, it's an awesome integration. Uh, again, go into our marketplace to get it set up. I think uh, we see uh, a question in there that I think is a nice segue to the questions part. Can we see some of the routing maps, tracking, uh, dashboard, et cetera? What would our outstanding routing team see if we get this going? So I, I think let me um, answer that really quickly, Charles, and then I will pass it on to like John to finish my answer here. I, I think that would be a good... Uh, thing to reach out to the links up team to do because I, I don't think that's something we can do on this uh, broadcast right now. But I, I think that would be a good thing to talk to the links up team. But I'm gonna pass it to John and Donna to answer that. Yeah, I mean that's perfect. Uh, be happy to show you. Uh, and if you reach out to us or reach out to Wes uh, and he can connect you to us, uh, then we can follow up and schedule a time to uh, with somebody to show you exactly what we're talking about. So yep. Uh, Charles, are you a WorkEase user? Um, just, I'll let you type. I see you're typing. So um, I we did get a few questions beforehand that we wanted to roll through. Um, and I, I'll, okay, cool, Charles, I'll, I'll see. I, I'll put a link in the chat real quickly um, as we talk about the next question that you can go to to find out about the links up stuff. Uh, so one of the questions that we had uh, beforehand uh, and I think it fits nicely with the conversation as a whole, but I wanted to ask uh, how how can someone get their employees on board with GPS tracking? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I'll certainly provide an answer and then, you know, Donna, if you have more, uh, obviously, um, you know, so I, I think one of the easiest ways, uh, sometimes people, uh, you know, do not like, you know, the fact that they're being tracked or, or do not like the fact that, you know, there's a camera you know, that's recording th outbound, you know, through the windshield and in the cab, right? But, uh, you know, essentially what we also find is that all it takes is, you know, one driver to be exonerated, um, you know, to you know, to have the video show, for example, that, you know, that they were not at fault. Or, you know, say they don't even have a camera, just have the GPS show that they were not at the location where the accused accident or incident took place, right? Um, the alleged incident took place. So uh, you know that uh, tends to you know turn people's uh, sort of thoughts around in terms of like, okay, uh, you know. And in fact, uh, there's an, an actual story um, where one of uh, somebody that we were working with uh, who provided under you know insurance, frankly. Um, you know, they required, they, they were insuring explosive trucks that carried propane and kerosene and stuff. Uh, and so, you know, essentially they required having a camera. There was resistance in the case, this case to the camera. Uh, but, you know, they had an incident where it showed the driver was not at fault. And then, you know, nobody wanted to leave the yard without the camera. So, you know, there are, uh, it, it, you know, it can cut both ways, frankly. You know, it can show that, you know, your driver was at fault or they were at the location where the alleged incident occurred. Um, but, you know, that can help you make a decision, too, which is, you know, do I settle this, you know, uh, this claim, you know, expeditiously and reduce my costs in terms of settling it, uh, reduce the amount of legal fees that I have to spend, that sort of thing, because the evidence shows, well, OK, you know, we were at fault. But, uh, you know, more often than not, if, as Donna said, you know, um, the, uh, you know, it's a third, a third, the driver's fault. Well, two thirds are not the driver's fault. So guess what? You know, this can help you prove that. So. Um, Donna, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I mean, John is spot on. And when you think about the claims costs and the fact that personal injury law firms are trying to get as much as they can out of companies, company road accidents, you know, I think John is spot on with that. I think the other thing is, you know, one of the other things you can do to, to help people get on board, help drivers get on board is to incentivize them for good behavior. So again, it's kind of goes back to driver scorecarding, it goes back to, um, you know, kind of contest and rewards. But I think if you, if you compensate them for safe behavior and make that part of their compensation package, that also tends to get them more on board more quickly and they tend to be more positive about it. Um, awesome. I think we only have time for one more question. We'll maybe try to sneak in another after this, but 
uh, just in case we can't, this might be the last question, uh, unless there are any more that come up. Uh, so one of the questions I had was, uh, can you share more about, I, I mean, we've talked about the lower uh, insurance costs. Um, can you guys expand on that a bit? And I, I mean, specifically, like, what are some things that uh, links up users can do to get this from the insurance company? Yeah, just a real quick, uh, you know, response to that is, you know, uh, insurance, many insurance carriers will provide a premium discount for having telematics. It's kind of almost as simple as that, you know, essentially. And, and some of them, some of them want the data from the telematics and some of them do not. It really is up to, you know, your insurer. Uh, but, you know, they may just know that, hey, look, I know in general people manage risk better if they have telematics, the, the business owners are managing their risk better. And therefore, you know, I will provide an insurance, you know, a premium discount for that. Or, you know, they may want to, you know, have the data and have a look at it. Um, so, you know, it depends uh, on, on what the, you know, the carrier's policies are. So. Awesome. Don, anything to add on that? No, I mean, other than I think it, you know, I would, you know, not all insurance companies provide um, kind of the premium discounts that John talked about, and some insurance companies provide more than others. So, you know, I would say it's a good time to shop around to see what kind of a deal you can get, um, what kind of a discount you can get uh, from several different companies uh, if you're planning on on uh, utilizing GPS tracking. Um, okay, so I think this is a good... Uh segue to kind of just, first of all, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to you guys if you guys want to say any last words. So um, let's do that before I end everything. John, Donna. Uh, sure, sure. I'll, I'll just say that hopefully, you know, there's been an opportunity to show how, you know, as the title advertised, how GPS helps you save money, you know, boost productivity, uh, improve customer, you know, satisfaction, trust, uh, and, you know, and, and also improve driver safety. Hopefully we've been able to give you some good tips on all of those. So thanks for listening. Yeah. And I would just say that, you know, hopefully, you know, GPS, GPS, you know, telematic systems, I think are one of, it's, it's a piece of technology that I think can be used um, kind of beyond kind of what it was originally designed for, again, into reducing liability into kind of more strategic uses for your business to help your business grow and kind of reduce your business costs. So, um, I think, you know, there's there's probably even there's even more uh, more ways that you can leverage GPS tracking. So it's great to get started. But I think the ways that you can be creative and strategic with it, that can really add even more business, more value to your business down the road. Yeah, and I, I think it's certainly more than just like tracking where your vehicles are um, at any given time. I, I think there's so much value uh, in implementing these systems, uh, just as Donna mentioned from a strategic standpoint. Uh, but I, as we close, I, I just want to thank, uh, Donna and John for joining us today. Um, I also want to thank everyone who joined live, uh, for those of you that want to watch the recording, uh, you can do this one of two ways. Uh, you can use the link you joined today with, or if you have someone on your team you want to share it with, it, same thing, use the same link. Uh, the other thing we are going to be doing is we're going to upload this webinar to our webinar library that you can find. Uh, I don't I don't remember the exact uh, URL for that, but just Google Workies webinars and it will be like the first thing that pop up pops up. You can also see our older webinars there. Uh, but yeah, this will be uploaded um, in, in that library and then on the same link uh, if you missed part of it and you want to go back. So again, again, thank you all for joining today. Donna, John, thanks for your time and uh, until the next one. Thank, thank you. you. All right. See you guys. Yeah.